Real quick before we get into today's video, just want to thank all the people over on Patreon for all of their support because without their help, all this upgraded content, in particular the video essays like the video essay on Naruto's curse, all that content would not be possible without the help of all the people on Patreon. And I know at this point the YouTube memberships is a running gag at this point and the YouTube membership filler arc is running on longer than some of the Naruto Shippuden filler. However, I am going to do something for YouTube memberships at some point, but what I can say about the Patreon on is that you get exclusive sneak peeks to videos that are months in advance you also get a really cool anime and manga haul that gets done every three months and there's some really good goodies in that one and and when we do q a's the people over on patreon get their questions answered first but with that being said let's get right into the review yo what's going on everybody it's your boy naruto explain here bring you guys another review for boruto episode 224 and just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up so i am out of town right now so today's review i'm not gonna be as loud as normal and the review might be a little shorter than normal because i am recording in a hotel room right now so I thank you for bearing with me on this, but getting right into it, I'm going to say right now, on a scale from 1 to 10, I was not very happy with this episode. I'm not going to say it's a bad episode, because I did get what they were going for thematically, but as you guys know, I don't pull punches when it comes to reviews. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel, whether or not I think the narrative intent worked, and in this case, I do believe that what they're trying to do with Wasabi versus Iwabe was something that could work. However, where I was a little disappointed, and maybe I'm just a victim of overhyping it myself, I was more so expecting this to be an actual battle. Kind of like how you had last week with Hokin and Nojin and you got to see some of the fruits of the training. I had a feeling that this might be the friendship episode, either this episode or the episode dealing with Sarda versus Chocho. I had a feeling that one of these was going to be the friendship episode where they were using their emotions and we got flashbacks in order to deal with everything. And that was kind of true. So for that reason, we have to judge this episode a little bit differently than we would any of the others. So I did think it was a good idea to kind of open up with Wasabi getting very embarrassed by her parents. And one of the things that we end up seeing is that because she's so embarrassed by them that when they start giving her all the stuff of you're going to be tuning you're going to be hokage it was one of those things where for a second i stopped and i said this kind of makes you look at all the other clans in konoha differently because it's so easy to get caught up in clans like the akamichi clan the Hyuga clan the uchiha clan and the abarami clan the four noble clans of konoha it's so easy to get caught up in those because those are all the cool clans. Then you got clans like the Uzumaki clan where you got the main character, Naruto, and the other main character, Boruto. It's one of those things where you get so focused on some of the more famous clans that when you look at clans like the Izuno clan, it's kind of easy to say, well, who are you? And I like the message that Awabe was trying to hammer home to her throughout this episode, which is it doesn't matter what clan you come from. That's something that Naruto himself believed in. And I thought that was a nice throwback to the whole Neji versus Naruto fight. However, when you see how Wasabi is holding the entire fate of her clan, if you will, on her shoulders because of the high expectations placed upon her. And we get this back information that nobody in her entire clan became a Jonin. I'm going to say this. That's not something that's crazy, in my opinion. If you just sit back and you look at the lore, not everybody becomes a Jonin. There are a lot of people who stopped their ninja journey at Chunin and the idea that this random clan never had anybody, anybody make it to the rank of Jonin, I think that I think that that's realistic. And it makes you look at somebody like Minato a lot different because the Namikaze clan is not some super special clan. As far as I'm concerned, because we have no information about anybody else in that clan. As far as I'm concerned, they're just a clan of fodder that just happen to spawn a generational genius until we get further information that's the only thing that we can assume about minato's clan and the reason why i say that is you had a basically a generational talent that came out of nowhere in terms of minato and he was able to make his rank up to hokage but even with somebody like minato According to Jiraiya, the signs were there very early on that this kid was going to be somebody truly special. You don't necessarily get that with Wasabi and with Awabe, but because you have somebody like Naruto who was at the bottom of the barrel, nothing truly special about him, 
but Naruto through hard work was able to make his way up to Hokage, it's not crazy for Wasabi's clan to put those expectations on her because they see something in her. Imagine being a clan or a family where the only thing that you know is mediocrity and you see somebody in your clan with that potential, you're gonna push them. And so it's very realistic what they're trying to do here. The only thing I wish we would have seen more is more of an actual battle from Wasabi and Awabe because their matchup skill sets, they make a lot of sense. And I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. Like I thought, man, they talked about how Wasabi was doing all this training and she got so much better. I even got to a point at one point where I hyped it up. I was like, man, it'd be so dope if we saw Wasabi versus Sarda because the cat cloak jutsu to make her go a lot faster. Watching these two fight, I had a moment where I said, I don't necessarily believe either one of them should be allowed to be tuning. I think they should just disqualify both of them. <laughs> but I will say from the narrative angle, this idea that wasabi is having to deal with the weight of her clan and taking that into the battle and see how it's negatively affecting her i thought that that was interesting now the only thing though is that we see how there are parents there and i thought that the arena was going to be closed off and everything was going to be streamed and so the idea of her parents being there in the arena that was another thing where it's like maybe this is just narrative intent in order to have it there i thought that this was a closed off examination it was just going to be broadcasted I think that not having her parents there and not having her grandmother there would have been something to where her mental state would have been a lot better because part of controlling your chakra is chakra is physical and it's spiritual energy, but it's also mental energy as well. And we've seen with characters like, once again, Minato, where when you're mentally checked out, you get a mental nerve and you're not able to tap into your full abilities. And it's one of those things where you see that very evidently when Iwabe very quickly picks up on the fact that Wasabi, even though she's using her cat cloak jutsu, she's not fighting at full power. And he even calls her out. He says that, you know, you're being very low energy right now. And Wasabi's just having this huge pity party. And they get into this huge squabble. And what's so disappointing about this is that it starts off with Awabe just using this huge earth release jutsu. And uh, Wasabi, she's just jumping in the air. She's going right into the cat cloak jutsu. You're thinking, man, this is about to be on point right here, man. Like, this has potential to be a really good fight. She's just going at it. And then when you watch as her expressions are changing, she's attacking Awabe you realize that yes, she's fighting, but she's not necessarily fighting to her full capability. And you get the moment where even Kawaki is looking over and he's yawning. Kawaki's getting bored of this. He's like, yo, Naruto pulled me here. Said there's gonna be some amazing jutsu and all I'm seeing is a talk no jutsu snooze fest. And we get the revelation that Yodo and Arya and Shinki, they come from the Hidden Sand Village and apparently they've already been promoted to Chunin, which I mean, I could kind of see that. They're supposed to be the new generation of the Sand Trio from the Sand Village. So I can kind of understand that those are Gar students, so there are high expectations. So I can kind of see that. And I feel like they did kind of tease that, you know, Shinki was taking keen interest in Kawaki. So maybe we're going to get some anime original stuff with those two. I'd be very curious to see those two mixed up and fight. But getting back to the Wasabi versus Iwabe battle, when Iwabe hears from Wasabi that her parents are the ones that are making her push for the Hokage dream, he really starts getting offended. And this is why I say it kind of gives me vibes of not just part one, Naruto versus Neji, but also Naruto versus Kiba. It looks like they took core elements of both, but instead of making them serious battles, they decided to make this battle more of a toned down battle that was more so character driven. I did like how they used the implementation of flashbacks where we get to see a little bit of Wasabi's clan. And I like that, you know, we see the grandmother talk about the legend of the monster cat. And I thought they were doing their best in trying to get the Izuno clan over to make us actually care about them. Because again, this is a character in Wasabi that's not in the manga. This is a character who hasn't had a ton of screen time. We don't know much about our clan. They're just a random clan like Namida's clan. So it's one of those things where you had to have something to get the viewer invested in them. I thought that using the grandmother was a nice little trope and how 
the mother is covering up the grandmother's ears when she hears that Wasabi doesn't have the dream of becoming Hokage and she doesn't think that the monster cat jutsu is a real thing. And so I thought that from a narrative perspective, this was something that could have worked. I don't think it quite got there. It might just be me. There might be a lot of you guys who watch this and you're like, man, this is amazing. I like the Izuno clan. I, I thought they did a good job. You might you might fall in that camp. I did think that they got the right balance of show versus tell. I can just say for me, I didn't have a hundred percent sympathy for the character of Wasabi. After Awabe is just saying, okay, you got this idea that you're not going to be able to achieve your dreams. You think that it's absolutely impossible. So if there's a huge monster cat that's as tall as a mountain, you believe that anything's possible. You believe that you'll be able to become Hokage one day and so what awabe does is instead of fighting this girl he decides to take his earth release jutsu and he creates this huge cat statue that's taller than the arena which that in of itself is very impressive and it should make you go back and look at episode 223 a lot differently because not only was Hoki able to use a earth release jutsu that big but he was able to maintain it for the entire time that he was fighting against Enojin, and then he was able to shoot off another Earth Release Jutsu that spanned the same size as well. So Hoki Ishimiki realized is pretty damn special. And shortly after Wabi makes this huge statue of a cat, the guy ends up suffering huge chakra depletion. Which again, a Earth Release Jutsu that huge. You have to maintain it all the time and you got to have monster chakra reserves in order to do something like that. And that's not something that's associated with the character of Awabi. So I did think that that was very realistic for him to pass out. And when that huge cat head is just rolling down and it's getting ready to crush him for a second, I got the whole Obito saving Kakashi vibes. I'm like, man, Stone Sama is coming back for revenge. Stone Sama said... It's not enough for me to make my debut around chapter 245 of Naruto. It's time for me to come back to the new era and make a new Obito. And I'm thinking Awabe is about to be crushed. And that's when we get the revelation that Wasabi, she's running over towards the scroll that her grandmother gave her to use that monster cat jutsu. She puts her hand down on it. She summons her chakra. And we basically get a cat-like version of a Susano where it's just pure chakra and you get this humanoid creature in the form of a cat and it gives her this monster strength and she's able to completely destroy and reduce this huge boulder that's in the shape of a cat head she's able to reduce it into rubble with just a single punch so that is something kind of impressive in the sense that once she's able to get the hang of that jutsu wasabi is going to have a very very powerful jutsu i just hate that we saw it in an episode where again yes it was character driven i have no problem with that i'm not one of these meatheads that need to see non-stop action i don't care about that i care about character driven episodes i was just not a huge fan of what they tried here i understand the narrative intent of it and i think that for what they are trying to do it works but i just thought that for me personally to make me get invested in that clan i don't think that it was enough for me. I get the feeling a lot of you guys are probably gonna be a fan of how they handled Wasabi and there might be some new fans of Wasabi. And so my question for you guys is, what do you think it says about Awabe that he is basically willing to throw away his dream of becoming a tuning for the short term in order to inspire Wasabi? What do you think that says about him? And is, is that a form of leadership for Awabe to be willing to do something like that? And the second question I have for you guys is, how do you guys feel about Borto and Mitsuki once again being out there searching for a motto? They're in that warehouse district. Who do you think those people are that grab a motto? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.